My name is Greg Gantrewski, and uh, as Andre told you already, I work here in, in Tobro in packaging and research, uh, uh, packaging and environment department. Sorry about that. Uh, my presentation here uh, is, is about uh, one of the main outcomes of the Plastis project, which is called the Transnational Advisory Scheme. Uh, however, um, this is just like an official name of this outcome. Uh, the, un the unofficial, the, the real name of it is uh, Bioplastics Opportunity for the Future. I'm just trying to get one of the... Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so, what I'm going to be talking about is, is this, this publication which you uh, all hopefully uh, got a copy of in your conference materials. Um, just a few words about our institute, but because we are like running a little bit short on time, I will, I'll just skip it. You will, uh, you will be able to uh, get hold of all those presentations later on, of course. So uh, the expected results of, of Plastis project uh, are mainly, um, uh, we have like main four outputs, which are national information points, the preparation of informational uh, information toolkit. Then we have a development of certification system for uh, compostable plastics and a research roadmap. And um, in work package four, which is work package uh, that we are most involved in, in and this uh, transnational advisory scheme is like the main output of, uh, we are mainly dealing with those, those three. Uh, the fourth one roadmap, the next presentation is going to be about it. Um, and uh, with regards to national information points and informational, uh, information toolkit, that mostly, uh, that mostly concerns our, uh, our publication. So right now I would just like to uh, go through some of the steps uh, that we took when uh, preparing this, 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 this little book and this little publication. So uh, in the beginning of the project we started from something called the context report on industrial requirements. Uh, what was that? That was, um, that was a study we did. Uh, it, it had like main two parts. Uh, first one was like theoretical literature review and uh, we, we research, we look at, at what is sustainability, the definitions, the different types of plastics, bioplastics, etc. And then we made a market research. Uh, market research was of uh, Polish packaging industry and consumers from throughout the Europe. Uh, we also looked at Slovenia, uh, packaging and retail industry, Polish food sector and retail sector and generally we looked at all the different uh, market research that concerns uh, plastics and sustainability, sustainable plastics, etc. Uh, we wanted to do it uh, because we wanted to have some background knowledge about uh, what uh, industry actually requires. What do they want from uh, sustainability? What do they want from sustainable plastics? So we had to start from somewhere. And um, we found out uh, that uh, in case of Polish and Slovenian companies, they are not really familiar with the term uh, sustainable and sustainability. Uh, both countries, uh, however, are f familiar with uh, terms like biodegradable and carbon footprint. Uh, very importantly, um, the market, they have a market-oriented approach, so they have like a pool, pool strategy, meaning that if the um, consumer and customer is willing to pay for something, then uh, we will adapt. Uh, we found out that, unfortunately, waste management strategy is of little consequence for, for the companies. However, companies were very willing and interested to receive assistance uh, with regards to sustainability and sustainable plastics. Um, so, uh, after that, uh, using like some kind of background information we found in here, uh, we started working on draft advisory scheme, which was like this draft publication, draft information toolkit, uh, which we, uh, between, uh, between partners, called Guide for Entrepreneurs. So we wanted, uh, we wanted it to be a con comprehensible guide about everything you need and want to know about bioplastics and sustainability. Uh, and uh, that was, of course, still in draft, in draft phase. Um, we uh, made this basic structure, which we tried to stick on uh, up until very end and uh, as, as you will look at the publication itself you will see that we actually manage it. So we wanted to have a chapter about uh, polymer materials, introduction and processing, so a chapter about uh, plastics, a um, chapter about sustainability and a chapter about evaluation system, certification, uh, etc. Um, 
so that was our idea how, how it should look like and that was based on this uh, first uh, context report uh, that we did. Uh, however, in order to shape this one, uh, this one further, uh, we did something uh, called the uh, pilot test. So we basically uh, were cooperating very closely with a number of uh, companies and we asked them uh, what kind of information toolkit about sustainability and sustainable plastics they would like to receive. Uh, and we made it in a, in a number of ways. First of all, we like asked to uh, companies like Biorec and Pediatrics and Avasevic to, uh, to make like a two case studies uh, for us about, and those case studies were about PLA processing, the problems of PLA processing, how to process it and uh, how to use it generally. Um, and uh, we also made uh, a type of a questionnaire that served a basis for uh, interviews with the companies. I don't know, may maybe probably some of the uh, company representatives that are sitting here uh, were maybe involved in this, I don't know. Uh, in, uh, there should be. Uh, however, uh, in here, this, served, this short questionnaire served as a, as a basis for uh, interview and discussion with companies, uh, how this information toolkit should look like, what the information toolkit should uh, uh, should contain uh, for the companies to be like uh, most most happy with it. So, um, what we found out, uh, the implications of that, is that most companies that were approached, uh, they do not yet, yet use bioplastics. However, uh, about half of the companies uh, actually plan to use them in the near future or are very interested in those materials. Uh, majority of the companies already have some knowledge about bioplastics, uh, so that was that was a change between uh, between the, the previous research we did, and uh, it was about like y one one year and a half difference between uh, the first publication and this one. Um, most important knowledge that companies would like to obtain from from some sort of a guide, from some sort sort of information. Uh, information source about sustainable plastics is the commercial availability, uh, general characteristics, applications, economic uh, implications, and waste management implications. However, it was uh, surprising that companies did not feel that strongly about certification and processing, which, according to us, were very crucial issues. Um, then we also had some questions, we, we also had some discussions with the companies about the format of the guide, what kind of format they would like to have. So most of the companies would rather have a more popular science approach uh, in the guide rather than a, a technical one. Uh, majority of the companies would like to have the, this guide available in the form of an ebook or PDF document, and of course uh, this one will deliver, and a physical uh, format of a book as well. So physical format of a book you have, and it's uh, both in, in English and Polish versions. Of course, our other partners from, from different countries, from Slovenia and Slovakia and Italy, will have this guide in their own uh, national languages as well. Um, a great number of companies also would like to participate in some form of seminars or workshop where the topic of sustainable plastics would be discussed. And this is something which uh, we would like to accommodate as well and we'll be preparing a series of uh, those kind of workshops. However, uh, all, our, all our findings from those interviews uh, led us to believe that companies are currently more interested in how sustainable plastics fit to their strategic objectives uh, rather more than a technical and operational one. So um, our idea then uh, for this, for this uh, publication uh, tra called tran uh, Transnational Advisory Scheme, um, we wanted to, um, uh, to accommodate for, for uh, all of those findings that we found out in, in, in our uh, interviews with the companies with this draft advisory scheme that we, uh, that we already made. So the title, Bioplastics Opportunity for the Future, was, was chosen uh, by all, all of the partners by, by voting. Uh, contents, once more, it's like a draft advisory scheme plus corrections and adjustments uh, and accommodations from, from this uh, pilot advisory test from companies. Uh, and we have an online version as well as the uh, physical format as a means of dissemination. And uh, this book includes two appendices and I will, I will talk, talk about them in a moment. So right now, I would just like to tell you a little bit more in details what's, what's inside this book. I mean, of course, you can, you can just, go, just, just browse through it and see, but I think that would be helpful for me just to tell you what exactly can you, can you find in here. So uh, this book 
we started from like 10 frequently asked questions, and those questions were like uh, revised and uh, prepared uh, by Luke Palm, who's unfortunately not here anymore. However, he's uh, one of the guys who's like uh, involved in the project and uh, helping us a lot. Uh, and those most frequently asked questions about, uh, about bioplastics, about sustainable plastics by companies are, uh, what products can be produced from bioplastics? Is it feasible to produce bioplastics based products from the economic point of view? <laughs> Is it technologically feasible to produce those plastics? Does my company have the right competences? Uh, do we have the right equipment? Uh, why should we certify bioplastics? Uh, how to convince clients to buy bioplastic products? Uh, where does my company find the right resources? Where do I find for partners? And of course, how do I start? So basically what we wanted to do in, in this publication is to give you, a, give you a good answer to all of those questions. And in the beginning, in the, uh, in the introduction of this book, you can actually find a short answer to all of those questions. And uh, uh, the answer refers you to uh, the particular uh, section or chapter of, uh, of the book itself. Um, so, mm, the chapters themselves. We have a chapter on, on plastics generally, so we have uh, their comprehensible background and technical information about plastics, plastics classification, including bioplastics, and market information about the global plastic industry. Um, so this is the sustainable plastic uh, classification that we used uh, based on um, uh, European Bioplastics Association, so you are probably, uh, hopefully aware of it. Uh, then the next big chapter we have uh, is a chapter on sustainability and uh, sustainability is uh, actually throughout the, throughout the project, throughout like creating this, this, this uh, information toolkit, uh, we actually discovered that sustainability is a very, uh, very difficult, very complicated subject, very complicated topic. Uh, because it is, it is rather soft, it's not very fixed, it's not very uh, scientific. You have like many, many different uh, definitions of sustainability in literature. Uh, those definitions are all like very varied. Uh, moreover, sustainability uh, is considered to be a, a multidisciplinary um, issue. Uh, so it has like, um, uh, it has all of those different sciences like, like economy, sociology, uh, environmental sciences uh, included in it. And it's very difficult to account for sustainability. It's very uh, difficult to find like a clear cut uh, solutions, how to account for sustainability, how to say whether one product or something is sustainable or not. Uh, so basically what we wanted to do is we wanted to uh, give, uh, uh, give you some kind of um, examples on uh, how can, uh, sustainability be assessed on different levels, on environmental level, on social level, and on economic level, uh, of course, according to uh, plastics production. So this is what you will find in this chapter. And the next big chapter is a chapter about evaluation criteria, and that's uh, a technical manual how to certify bioplastics in terms of compostability, bio-based content, uh, and also uh, carbon footprint. Um, as as you will read through our publication, you will see that uh, certification is indeed uh, a very, very useful tool, especially to differentiate. As we know, the main problem of um, bioplastics is that they virtually look identical to normal plastics in most cases. Uh, and certification is like one way to differentiate, but not only for uh, the end customers, for them to know what to do with those plastics, but also to differentiate from, from, uh, from our competition. Um, and then we have those two appendices that I talked about. So the first app appendix is a, is a showcase where we uh, are actually showing nice, uh, pretty pictures of uh, different applications, different possible applications of bioplastics. So be sure to read through it. You might be surprised how, uh, uh, how strange applications bioplastics can, uh, can have. And the next appendix B is R&D scheme, and that's a detailed piece of R&D contact. Uh, and uh, R&D tasks and other testing specific to bioplastics, but I believe that next presentation is going to be specifically about it, so I don't want to go uh, into uh, many more details. So, um, 
I would very much uh, once again encourage you to uh, browse uh, through this publication and read it. Uh, if you want some additional copies of it, uh, we have some on the front desk, uh, so you are very welcome to uh, uh, take uh, as much as you want, of course, until our stock lasts. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs>